this dude from Maine, Vince Gonson, decided to um, reject the lockdown rules and decided to reopen his bar because he felt as if, like, I think they'd done six weeks of lockdown. They tried to stem the tide a bit. But I think because it's approaching tourist season, he just can't see a place in time where he can afford to have his bar or, or restaurant, or whatever it is, um, completely closed during the entire time. Which is, again, I have sympathy for. I think in the beginning, especially with those protests, because well, most of those protests were people in the streets and shit, um, shouting in front of you know town halls. They usually contain you know some of the people on the lunatic fringe or whatever side of the argument they fall on. Um, people that want to stay in forever and the people that want to go out, at least certainly now with no clothes on then you know equally as crazy but i think those protests we just don't really represent don't they don't articulate their point well enough in terms of like why are they protesting the nationwide lockdown um but i think some of these people that are own their businesses and want to reopen again like a woman that had a hair salon that got arrested they've articulated it really well like you know like we're willing to take the risk we, we, we don't mind opening up at 20 30 40 50 percent capacity but they just want to be able to make some kind of living and they don't think it's const it's constitutionally correct for them to be you know denied the fact that denied the ability to make a living to support their family put food on the plate especially if you're in a position where you're told to close and then you're told to close and then you're told to close and if you want to make money if you want to get that money back that you've lost go on benefits and you apply for benefits because all that years you've been working it probably is going to affect your benefits and you won't get that much anyway because they'll just see from your tax returns that you've had a business that's been grossing an X amount. So it puts you into this weird loop where you're essentially just handcuffed to the government and they're having to decide when they can allow you to go back to making money to feed your family, which is incredibly nuts. But I thought his um, interview was pretty funny. I'll get up on it real quick to show you. It's on YouTube. I think his name's Guy something, however. Because the number of COVID-19 cases differs so wildly from county to county, the governor's plan to reopen businesses gradually on a statewide basis is coming up again. One such business, a restaurant, opened a full month before it is supposed to, and it drew a crowd. Okay. News that our means Hannah Deneen reports from Bethel. We just defied the governor's order and we opened up. Owner Rick Savage has opened the doors of Sunday River Brewing Company. We and of course his name is Rick Savage, and of course he has had sunglasses on his head, of course. You were told May 1st, and we got ready for that, and last week, right before, you know, the beginning of the week, she changed it, and we just said we can't do it. People need to be opened up. Restaurants are part of the second wave of the governor's plan to slowly reopen the state, which means this restaurant should not be open until June 1st. In spite of that order, these people... I love the accent. In Scanson, open up. It's sort of like a weird Canadian sort of vibe, isn't it? In Scanson, open up. But look at the queue. So they're all queuing outside of his restaurant, you know, in the rain, which is, which is quite encouraging to see. Once everything does open up, there is this assumption that no one's going to be eating out anymore. And restaurants are going to, you know, die a slow death, which they probably are. But I think if you can survive and hang on to their life, I think the your local community of power or punters in general will want to um, see you win. So you're going to see a lot of kind of goodwill towards restaurants. People just booking you know, seats to sit at their local or sit somewhere that they really wanted to sit and grab a meal with their friends or whatever, maybe just to support them and make sure that they can survive another two, four, six, you know, eight months. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. Like, they're all queuing in the rain out here to see this restaurant. People, most of them not wearing face masks, came from across the state and beyond to express their support. You can't keep people cooped up. This is America. We need to be free. What is there to be afraid of? I don't fear the flu. I don't want to get it. I don't want to get this. But no, we've had it. Enough is enough. It's unclear. And even though it's, you know, it shouldn't be a political issue, it does, has turned into it every, across the world. You know, politicians are essentially fighting um, for the right to not be painted as some sort of, you know, coronavirus serial killer. No one wants to have that kind of blip on their CV. No one wants to be remembered as a person that essentially, you know, um, uh, was essentially in charge when, you know, people's grannies and granddads are dying. No one wants that. But I find it interesting observing from the outside in America, especially, or outside in looking at America, that most of the people that are um, for the opening up of the states and people going back to normal are, you know, it seems like, especially from the media, they are predominantly, you know, Republicans 
Republicans and they lean towards supporting Trump at all costs. And like you just look at the video and the amount of red hats in this queue is just obscene, right? Everyone's sort of like MAGA and Trumpian. And they're also very much against wearing a face mask, which I don't really understand. I think if you were going to be campaigning and champion for things to go back to normal, right? So you could go back to drinking your beers with your friends, shooting dice, playing pool, going to watch the football, whatever you do, right? Wouldn't you want to get it done as quickly as possible? That would mean by making sure no one around you gets sick or by at least trying to obey some sort of kind of like general rule to make sure that spread doesn't, doesn't spread so quickly because you, you do the same if you've got a cold right i don't know if people are the same but if you had a flu or a cold you would generally stay away from people you wouldn't necessarily go to a crowded bar because you know you want to get everyone sick and they don't want to sit around you as you're coughing and heaving on the table so why is it any different to this i guess because they some of them probably don't even believe this exists which is not a big majority i think that whole conspiracy about it's not a real thing is full sort of like falling by the wayside due to the, num the sheer numbers around the world it's hard to really um it's hard to kind of rationalize or even even to yourself that there's some sort of malevolent force out there you know telling people to pretend that they're sick you know in this coordinated effort to bring down government and to sort of like you know have us living in this um dictatorship or um big brother state that's not necessarily going to happen but i just find it interesting no one in this queue is wearing masks no one is observing social distancing but they're ardently against being locked in their homes it's like well you gotta you gotta you know meet us in the middle here clear how or if law enforcement will react to the defiance of the governor's orders as for savage he says he's prepared for fallout we feel she's gonna arrest me today for violating the order and and, and frankly we don't care in bethel hannah denine fair, fair play to her isn't it? fair play to him sorry um he's an absolute psychopath but i like it man i like the approach i'm interested to see what's going to happen next um it's disappointing that it's not the politicians who are, you know, being flexible and trying to see how they can reopen. It's going to be up to the civilians or up to um, regular folk to decide what happens next. Because politicians, because if one thing we've realised with governments is that, you know, they may be quick to enact something, but then when it comes to reversing it or sort of changing tact or, you know, kind of moving and being a little bit nimble, they move like a fucking, you know, they've got the turning circle in the fridge now, this bit. No one really knows how to tackle this outside of just being in lockdown. So it's sort of like, come on, make, you know, think of some other ideas, get more creative. You know, you, you essentially get paid to stand in front of a podium and do that weird finger thing. Like, give us something more. But, you know, what do I know?